Hi, I'm Akronidik, lead developer of Rackforms, and in this video, we're gonna take a quick look at getting started with Rackforms Express. You're probably excited to get going and building your first forms, and so this video is gonna show how you can do that in the quickest manner possible. So I should say before we get started with the demonstration, um, the rackforms.com uh, slash documentation uh, link right here, as we can see, is where we want to find all the documentation uh, for our Rackforms Express installation. And in fact, you may have found this video by clicking on this guy right here. Um, if you ever have questions about Rackforms, uh, this is probably the best place to start. And then, of course, we can always be reached at email at info at rackforms.com. So with that, uh, let's actually get started. So I'm going to click over to Rackforms Express, the login screen here. This is what we're first going to see after we're done with the installation process. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by logging in right here and we'll take a look at the various uh, parts of the interface. So the first main part here is the section up on top right here. We have the Rackforms logo. We have a couple different items up here. We're looking at a few of these as we uh, work with jobs. But uh, these guys up here are our main links for navigating within the, uh, the Rackforms Express interface. So right now, and by default, we always start with the editor interface. However, we also have the entry viewer. We have user management. We have, of course, the documentation link, which takes us back to this page. We have an information page. This actually uh, prints information about your PHP uh, installation. And of course, we have our logout and upgrade link uh, to the standard Rackforms version. So we're going to concentrate on the editor and the entry viewer in this video. So as far as the editor itself is concerned, uh, of course, the idea here is we want to build a form. So whenever we create a form, the first step is we want to name our form something. And we do that right up where it says job name right here. Notice if I mouse over the current job name, it'll say click to edit. And when I do so, I can then simply type in and hit return to save a new job name right here. Now, if at any time I want to access a job that I've already saved, I use the load a save job menu right here. And as you can see right here, I actually have two forms that are already saved, contact form and job demo. Now, as far as building forms themselves, we break the editor into three main areas. The first is add elements, and as the name suggests, this is where we're going to be adding items to our form pages. The second area is the form preview area, and again, as the name suggests, this is where we're going to get a preview of our form. And finally, we have the edit form attributes area. This is where we set the attributes of the pages and form film elements in our job. So for the purpose of this video, let's say that I want to create a standard contact form. To do that, I'm going to start by selecting one of these two page types right here. So these two guys are both what are known as form pages. The only thing that's different between these two is the layout mode that we start with. So we have two layout modes. We have sortable and freeform. Once again, as the name suggests, sortable means that we're going to put all elements in a list, and freeform means that we can drag and drop elements wherever we want. We also have the confirmation page type. Now in rack forms, every job that we create will have at minimum two pages. The first page, and subsequent any other pages, will always be the area where we're collecting information from our users. That is, we'll be presenting them with form input elements, text boxes, select items, submit buttons, and so on. The confirmation page is how we actually tell React Forms what to do with our form submission, as well as providing the users with a confirmation message on that page. So if I wanted to build a contact form, I would do something like this. I would start off by adding a sortable page to my form, and then I'd immediately click the confirmation page to add a confirmation page. Now I'll select my form page by clicking on its header right here, and now from the list of raw elements right here, I'll click each one of these buttons for each one of the elements that I want to add to the form. So in this case, let's add two fields for collecting name and email. We'll collect a message right here, and then finally a submit button. So now what we want to do is we want to rename some of these fields so they make sense for our form. And this is where the edit form attributes area comes into play. So in this case, I have sortable page header, and I certainly want to change that to something that makes sense. So how about contact form? So I'll go ahead and select the text under label right here and just change it to contact form. Now what's nice about the Rack Forms interface is that all the other label elements that we see are also under this label uh, area right here. So for example, text right here, I want this to be name, so I'll simply highlight the text and call it name. Notice how our name item right here changes as well. For this, I'm going to ask for the user's email, so I'll highlight this and say email. And then finally for this, I'll say contact message. 
Now, what's uh, interesting about this is we, of course, have many more things that we can fill out right here. And I certainly encourage you to, uh, to play around with some of these options. But at very minimum, so long as we're changing the labels, we usually don't have to change anything else about a particular form. One thing that we will probably want to change on a regular basis, though, is our validation. So if I select this first name item right here, I want to make sure that if a user fills out this form, that they provide me with a name. So I'm going to go ahead and under validation, I'm going to mark this field as required. I'm going to leave email alone, but for contact message, I'm going to require this and also put a second validation rule, which is to say at minimum, I want 20 characters and at most 200. Now we're going to turn our attention down to the confirmation page. I could build this job right now and we'd certainly see this page, but if I submitted the form, our data that we're collecting right here won't actually go anywhere. So we need to tell RAF forms what to do with this form submission. And again, that's where the confirmation uh, page comes into play. There's one thing I want to quickly point out. You notice right here that I have under raw elements, a bunch of elements that deal with form input fields, right? Text fields, input items, submit buttons, etc. If I click my confirmation page right here, I want you to notice how this guy is actually going to change. So here we can see now that these items deal with submitting our form. We have three main submit items and they're all colored in red. And I should also real quickly point out that, well notice these green items right here. If I click up to this first page, there's some green items right here. Green is our color code for display fields, right? This is where we're showing our user information but not asking for input. So on the confirmation page, we have these different items which I can use to create the style of my form, but these red items right here are going to be for collecting the form data and sending it somewhere. Now at the beginning of the video, you may recall that I mentioned we're going to take a look at editor and entry viewer. Entry viewer is going to be one of the most popular ways that you actually send data somewhere. And to use it's really simple. All I'm going to do is on the confirmation page right here, I'm going to select this guy that's called simple SQL. This guy, when added to a form, is going to collect all my form field data right here, and it's going to send it to the entry viewer. And we can actually take a look at that right now. So I'll go ahead and build my form by pressing the green button that's labeled Preview and Save Form. My form gets built, and I'll go ahead and enter my information here. And I'll say, this is a sample email message and then I'll hit submit. Now you notice that we go to our confirmation page and indeed it looks just like the preview right here, but importantly now, if I go over to entry viewer, under the list that says select the job to view entries, I can actually select that and under the demo job that I created, remember when we named it, I can select it and then here indeed is the message that I entered. Now there's a few things that we can do in here. We can uh, delete entries from this, we can print them, and we can even toggle an edit mode right here that allows us to change these entries if we want to uh, modify the way that submission came through. Finally, we can also export a result as tab delimited. Finally, the last two items that we have, let me go ahead and load our job here, are we have our email items. Now, the email items are broken into two categories. The first is called simple email, and the second is called email plus. Now, if I had a simple email to my form right here, provided my server has email set up in generally any web server that you buy from a shared hosting plan is going to actually have this already. So long as we provide an email to field, from field and generally a subject, this will just work the same as simple SQL does. That is, RackForms does all the work for us. We don't have to think about formatting any of the data. RackForms will simply take all these fields and send them an email to the address that we supply. By contrast, there are going to be many times when we actually want to send a custom email. And so to do that, I would use Email Plus. Email Plus has the same general functions, that is, we fill out a to, from, and subject. But here, instead of rack forms formatting our email for us, we actually format it using custom formatting. So for example, I could say, here is my name field, and then populate the name, that is this guy right here, using the dynamic variable picker. So I would select, for example, text one, because that's the first field. And now this email that we get will have the word name, and then be followed with the live runtime value with whatever the user filled in with this field right here. Finally, the last thing I want to talk about is how we actually embed forms onto our site. So there's a couple different ways that we could do this. Probably the most popular, though, is with this button right here. If I mouse over this, you'll notice it says Embed Page. If I click this guy, RAFForms is going to ask me first if I want to copy this uh, uh, code that RAFForms created to my clipboard. Not all systems are set up for this, so generally we just hit OK to this right here, and then we're going to get a little prompt that says your form's iframe code, and then all you have to do is select that all and copy it, right? So select all, and then copy, 
And now anywhere that accepts HTML, I can simply paste that code into that area in my formal display. So a good example of this would be a web page you're working on, and we've cleared out an area for our form. All we'd have to do is paste that code in. Or for example, Facebook. If Facebook allows forms on a particular page, you'd literally copy and paste that code in, and that iframe then, your form, will simply display in line with the rest of the page. So that's our quick look at Ratforms Express, and there's obviously a lot more to it, but hopefully this gives you a good idea of how easy it is to create forms. So long as you remember that every job is going to have at least two pages, that is a form and confirmation page, and that as long as we provide a confirmation module, either simple SQL to go to Entry Viewer or one of the emails, we're going to be off and running in no time whatsoever. Of course, thank you again for trying out Ratforms Express. We hope it is a great and powerful tool for you. And of course, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us at info at ratforms.com. And uh, happy form making.